Hey, what's up, OWO Maniacs? This is OWO UK, and we are back. Um, sorry, I'm back. Whatever. Um, so, as I stated in the trailer that I posted, my good friend Josh is doing a marathon of the Halloween movies ready for when the new one comes out this year. So I had a little bit of a chat with him, and we decided it'd be pretty cool if I did the same and gave my sort of take on the Halloween films. Now I know Josh is up to four I believe at the moment um, so I have got some catching up to do but I'm pretty sure that um, I can do it. So obviously I'm going to start my reviews with the 1978 movie the one that started it all and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of give a little bit of background, skip through a little bit of plot and a bit more background and then I'm going to go through the whole plot and then give sort of my opinion, my take of it at the end. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm, I'm hoping to do. Hopefully it'll be quite informative and you'll enjoy it. So we'll see. So obviously, like I said, Halloween 1978, this is where the whole story begins. Film stars Donald Pleasance as Dr. Sam Loomis, Loomis even. Tony Moran plays the 23-year-old Michael Myers and it's introducing Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode. So I did a little bit of, like I said, research and looked up a few facts. I'm not going to go like mental and just read out everything that was on the Wikipedia page. I'll just sort of give, sort of give a bit of a backstory. So the original Halloween was uh, produced on a budget of $300,000, which... I suppose given the fact that it was a gamble at the time, it is quite a lot of money. But, you know, by today's standards, it's, it's nothing. And it grossed $47 million at the box office in the United States and $23 million internationally. So that gives you a $70 million worldwide um, profit, you know, ticket sales. So straight away, obviously, that... The well into the uh, the black with it. It sold almost thirty million tickets in nineteen seventy eight and became one of the most profitable independent films made. The film is usually praised for the uh, the direction, the way it's filmed, and the musical score. I mean, that theme tune is iconic, and a lot of like hardcore film critics uh, credit the film as the first in a long line of slasher films. Um, but inspired by Hitchcock's Psycho in 1960, which is a great film. Um, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry uh, by the Library of Congress, Congress, even, sorry, I can't talk, in 2006, and they said the film was culturally, culturally, uh, culturally historically, or aesthetically significant. I'm going for probably culturally, culturally, I can't even say that word, significant um, as you know it was a classic film and i have said it, it set up a whole line of other films um, that followed so basically uh, the plot uh, in 1963 Halloween night in Haddonfield Illinois little Michael Myers is dressed in a clown costume and mask for no reason at all just goes mental and stabs his older sister Judith to death with a kitchen knife in the their house. He then gets hospitalised at Warren County's Smith's Grove Sanatorium and then 15 years later on October 30th 1978 which is the year I was born Michael's uh, psychiatrist Dr Loomis and his colleague Marion Chambers arrive at Smith's Grove Sanitarium to take Michael to court. As they get there they're driving down and they see a load of patients walking around uh, in the in the grounds and so like they're dissing right and it's, there's a storm going on and everything so they pull up to the gate Loomis gets out of the car goes over to the gate to buzz or whatever through and then you just see somebody jump on the roof of the car and then uh, the nurse is sort of looking panicky hand comes through the window grabs hold of her uh, she manages to wrestle herself free gets out of the car the person gets into the car boom gone and 
Loomis goes running back over to her and you know sort of comforts her and you know he just says to her you know that's it now the evil is gone which is probably a real I, I don't know why but I really enjoyed that line I really like that line I just think it sets up as a bit of a um, a clue as to how Michael's going to be late when it's just by the fact that he said the evil is gone it's sort of like wow you know this this kid this guy must be something you know different I mean most people know obviously the plot but like I said I'm going to go through it quickly and just sort of refresh anybody who's not seen it for a while's mind so Michael steals Loomis's car and heads home to Haddonfield on the way he kills a mechanic for his uniform uh, which is the overalls that he wears and a bit later on he steals a white mask and some rope from a shop in Haddonfield the mask is the legendary you know well-known mask that Michael wears which is actually a William Shatner mask um, that somebody was sent out to buy they were basically given like a couple of dollars and told right go buy a mask uh, get something scary they came back with this William Shatner mask uh, sprayed it white and boom it's just you know the iconic mask that everybody associates with Michael Myers so yeah that's a little, little fact there for you though, for those of you who didn't know that uh, so the next day Halloween um, Michael's stalking uh, Laurie Strode after her and Tommy Doyle who's a young lad she looks after drop off a key at his former house so her dad can try to sell it uh, during the day Laurie notices Michael following her he's standing outside of school driving past him but uh, her two friends that she's with Annie Brackett and Linda Van Vanderklok is that right? Yeah, yeah Vandercloak or whatever, however you pronounce it. Um, just you know, tell her that no, you you just imagining things. Anyway, eventually, uh, Doctor Loomis arrives in Haddonfield looking for Michael, uh, having a pretty good idea what's what's going to happen. He goes to the graveyard and gets somebody to show him the plot where Michael's, where uh, sorry, where Judith's uh, headstone is and when they get there they realize it's gone um so loomis is pretty you know sure now yeah michael's back so loomis meets up with annie's father who is the sheriff uh, sheriff lee bracket and uh, he explains what's going on and the dangers that michael you know could be and everything so they start looking at michael's house um loomis tries his best to warn the sheriff about how much of a danger Michael is and the danger he poses. Sheriff's pretty skeptical at this point, he's not having any of it. Uh, and then he goes on to explain that Michael is just pure evil and capable of you know further violence, despite the fact that he's just been stuck in an asylum for all these years. So Sheriff Brackett starts patrolling the streets while Loomis waits and watches the house, expecting Michael to return there. Later on that night, Laurie goes over to babysit Tommy. Um, who at one point is watching The Thing, which was another John Carpenter film which came out in 1982, I believe. I've not seen it, but I know of it. So, yeah, she's babysitting Tommy, and her friend Annie is babysitting over the road, and she's looking after a little girl called Lindsay Wallace. Uh, she's totally unaware that Michael's watching him. So Annie's boyfriend, Paul, rings her and says, you know, do you want to come and pick me up? So she takes... Lindsay over to the Doyle house where Annie, um, Laurie is and says, you know, you're going to spend night with Laurie and Tommy. So, you know, the kids are sat down watching TV. Laurie's doing, you know, the good babysitter thing, you know, being, you know, just really nice. And the other one is just basically going to pick a boyfriend up so she can go get her rocks off. This is after she spilt butter for popcorn all over herself. So she has to go and take her close to the laundry which is separate to the house it's like leave the house down the back garden there's a little room where the washing machine and everything so she puts all her clothes in there grabs a shirt that belongs to the guy who owns the house assuming he's not going to mind she's still in his clothing and then goes to pick a boyfriend up so she can take him back there and get the rocks off so Annie starts singing this song a really bad song about a boyfriend goes out to the car can't get in the car's locked goes back into the house gets the keys comes back out and the door's open and she without realizing this she, she sits in the car and sits down 
she's just about to start it up and then Michael pops up strangles her and then just slits her throat so this is his first kill while he's wearing the mask and it's almost an hour into the film so really you've only seen him kill one person so far anyway beside the point so soon after that Linda and her boyfriend Bob um, arrive at the house and they can't find Annie so they just decide you know what we're in somebody's house anybody could walk through the door at any moment so let's have sex so they go upstairs you know do all they do and then Bob goes downstairs to get a beer for Linda runs into Mr Myers in the kitchen who stabs him with a knife and pins him to the wall which they're killing him so Michael then poses as Bob in a ghost costume which basically puts a white sheet over him cuts two eye holes out and puts Bob's glasses on goes up to the bedroom where Linda is she starts doing this sort of striptease thing saying oh, you know anything you like and all this sort of thing Michael just stands there breathing and does nothing so anyway Linda calls Laurie you can see what's what's going on and then she picks up the phone and puts it to her Michael grabs the phone cord and then strangles her to death with the cord meanwhile uh, Loomis discovers his stolen car which was parked about 20 yards from him the whole time and somehow he's only just noticed it but you know never mind so he starts combing the streets looking for Michael trying to look for anything uh, Laurie can't get any answer from the girl who's just wrong and who's just died I can't remember her name already that's really 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 bad my memory is shocking I do apologise um, Linda yeah Linda so yeah so she goes over to the house and finds the bodies of Annie, Bob and Linda in an upstairs bedroom as well as Judith Myers's headstone the headstone's laid on the bed with Annie laid on the bed in like a Jesus crucifix pose and you know the bodies just appear from nowhere and just sort of really conveniently drop down while Laurie's in the room so Anyway, she's obviously you know, terrified, petrified, which you know, I'll admit, I'm a bloke. I'd be petrified if a corpse dropped down in front of me. So she then sort of hides um, in the hallway. And then she's sort of stood against the wall and you just see the doorway. And this is probably one of my favourite bits of the film. You just see Michael sort of step forward and the light hits the mask. And then it's like he's there and then he just slashes her arm. Now, why he don't just take her out completely like he's done with the other three is beyond me. But, you know, he slashes her arm. So, Laurie you know, just about gets away from Michael, runs back over the road, tells the kids, go upstairs, lock the door, wait for me. Michael gets into the house, attacks her again, but she manages to fend him off uh, long enough for Tommy and Lindsay to escape. She tells them to go run down to somebody's house bring the police, get the police out, you know. Anyways, they are running down the street. Loomis sees the two children running down and um, asks them what's going on. And then he, he goes into the house to see what's going on and finds Michael and Laurie fighting upstairs. Loomis shoots Michael six times and the final bullet takes him flying off the balcony, which, you know, is a pretty cool scene. The way they do it is great. Loomis goes out onto the balcony, looks down to check on Michael's body, gone. Nowhere to be seen, it's vanished. So he sort of looks around, he has a kind of a, you know, look about, oh well, I kind of expected that. He sort of looks around into at night. And then places where Michael's previously been um, are shown as his breathing is heard. So that sort of gives you the impression that it could be anywhere. And the last view you see is of the Myers house. And then Laurie gets taken off in an ambulance. And, you know, that's pretty much it. That's, you know, so you think that's that's that. Like I said, the, the, Michael's obviously still alive because you can hear the breathing and everything. But nobody knows where he is. So, overall, this film is an absolute classic. No doubt about that. It is a brilliant film. And for the time it was done... It's just amazing. I have 
sort of got some positives and negatives about the film. Um, some of the acting is a little bit corny and a bit wooden, and some of the teenagers that are in it say things that your average teenager wouldn't have said. Like, in, even in the seventies, I would imagine like stuff oh, like "wonderful." I don't know many teenagers that have ever used the word "wonderful." Um, there is a scene where Michael's stalking Laurie and Annie in a car, and as he's following them in the stolen car, he's like right behind them. How they don't notice him is beyond me. It, it, it's just so unsubtle about it. It's just bang, right behind them. They pull up. He doesn't even pull up a good distance away or on the opposite side of the street. He pulls up pretty much behind them, um, but a little bit back. So to me, straight away, that would have been like, well, that car's been following us a while. And now it's parked up there. What the hell's going on sort of thing? But, you know, that's, that's a, something and nothing. As I mentioned, it takes Loomis ages to find the car that Michael stole, which you know, apparently was parked opposite the Myers house the whole time, so God knows how he missed that. Um, the bit where the bodies drop down and scare Laurie, Bob just drops down from wherever, and then the cupboard door opens to show Linda, I mean, like, what are the odds of being in the room when... Everything just decided that you know the door couldn't stay shut anymore. The body's gravity were going to make it fall. Um, and then when Michael attacks Laurie, like I said, when he, he comes in the doorway, he doesn't kill her outright. Yeah, I mean, I realise that obviously she's your your lead. She's your the the main one of the main characters in the film, and she's you know pretty much needed towards the end of the film. But he's killed three other people outright. You know and. Why would he just slash her arm? It just seems weird that after killing the other three, he'd been well capable of taking Laurie out, but he only slashes her. Uh, when Laurie runs out of the house, starts screaming for help in the street. There's a the street is full of houses. Now, I I live on a street that's got houses everywhere, and the slightest noise outside, and you can guarantee I've seen it. There's people at the bedroom windows all the time having a nosy. So out of all those houses either side of the street, nobody was curious to see why a girl was running down the street screaming, help me. I, I, I'd fail to see how nobody would be nosy enough um, to do that. The scene where Laurie and Michael are fighting, she sort of pulls the mask off and Loomis is stood there and then he waits till Michael puts the mask back on before he shoots him. And, you know, it's like, to me, why? You know where it is. Shoot him. You know, just, just take him out. You don't have to be wearing the mask. We need to have to shoot him. But, you know, it is what it is. Despite those, I, I don't want to say bad points. I think the more just things that confused me and sort of, I noticed and this kind of irritated me a little bit. Um, I love this film. <laughs> I'm... I have stated before in other videos um, and stuff, um, but I'm not a massive horror fan. However, just lately, I do seem to be on a bit of a horror kick. I've watched um, this Halloween and I've, I've binge watched a couple, so there's more videos to come, obviously. But I, I have kind of found myself thinking, right, well, I've watched that, so what's next? Um, but Michael Myers is, is definitely one of my favourite characters from a horror film. Um, it'll probably go, if I had to do a three, top three, it'd be Chucky at three, Michael at two, and Jason at one. They, they would be my top three uh, horror characters. So, yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, this is a great movie. Uh, there isn't much gore, which I personally don't have a problem with, because given the time when it came out, you know, the... It, it did what it needed to do. It made people jump and everything like that. So, yeah, like I say, I have no problem with that. To me, in this film, less is more. It's more about the not knowing where he is and, you know, stuff like that. And they, they build it well. And the, the scenes, a lot of them are filmed as if you're looking over Michael's shoulder so you can see what he sees. And it's like the point of view filming, or POV, as some people call it. Um, that is done really well in this film. And it's something that really adds a really good element to the film so yeah um if and that is a very big if you haven't seen this movie 
check it out it is well worth a watch it still holds up today without a doubt i've got to admit it is definitely one of my favorite horror movies and like i say i'm not a massive horror fan but yeah this this film is definitely worth checking out i thought it was a great movie it's a classic pretty much any horror fan will include this somewhere in the top 10 or whatever of horror films so yeah uh, that was my review my thoughts whatever you want to call it on the original 1978 halloween movie there will be a video coming for halloween 2 like i say i've binge watched them i've, I've made notes which is why i kept sort of flicking to one side apologize if you know it's that by given my memory um i had to write notes and stuff as i was watching the films so i knew when it comes to film the videos i could go to my notes so yeah uh i've done notes for all of them that i've watched i'll be honest i'm sorry josh uh, but i've watched them all but i'm not gonna overtake josh i'm gonna catch up with him and then as he does them i'll post my video and then hopefully at some point me and josh will get to do a video together and discuss what we thought and the halloweens which was our favorite etc etc and stuff like that so yeah that's it guys that's definitely it for now so that was my review of halloween the original 1978 john carpenter deborah hill film i hope you've enjoyed the video thank you for watching um if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel leave a like leave a comment what you thought of the film you know if there's anything you thought it liked or something you thought it did really well whatever anything you want to leave uh feel free it's much appreciated and that'll do it for now guys i'll see you when i do halloween 2 so as always bye for now guys take it easy Thank you.